we're taking a look at how we created the end credits of There Comes a Knocking. Again, if you haven't seen the film, check it out in the links below because, you know, you should. Given that this was a proof of concept for my feature, I really wanted to infuse it with as much tone as I could, and the end credits were a big part of that. At first, I was considering doing it all CG, but considering the time and budget that we had, I knew that just wasn't gonna be possible. So then, thanks to my editor, Lucas, and a video on Lens Pro site, I discovered a lens I hadn't heard of before. And I'm surprised I did it. And it's this guy here, a snorkel lens. A fucking snorkel lens. Perverted. But before we get into that, quick PSA. Black Friday is just around the corner again, coming this November the 29th. And as always, everything on our store is gonna be discounted like crazy. This year, we're giving you 80% off all of our legacy products and 60% off of all the new goodies for the first hour only. Then it'll be 75% off all the legacy products and 50% off all the new stuff for the rest of the day. And we have a bunch of new stuff coming like educational goodies, some sound effects, LUTs, music, and new VFX assets. And in fact, here's a little teaser for our new VFX pack. More on that very soon, but for now, mark your calendars so you can come legally rob us blind. Now back to this phallic little sniper scope. With this lens, you can get insanely close, and due to that proximity and the lens size, it's giving you a truly unique view of all sorts of things. This specific snorkel lens is the Laowa 24mm macro, which I rented from Lens Pro to Go just for this project. And this one works with the Sony E-mount, so I was able to just use my A7S for it, which I've had this camera for years, and it continues to impress the hell out of me. Still, my favorite low light camera and perfect for things like this too. It's just a solid workhorse. But the lens has an LED ring built right into it, which I didn't use for this, but I can see how it would come in handy for all sorts of things. You can also submerge it into water up to around seven inches, which is a uh, fun fact. One thing to keep in mind is the lowest you can go with the iris on this is f14. For what I was shooting here, that was fine since the idea was to hit the door with a ton of light so that everything else would fall easily into darkness. But if you do end up using it, it's definitely something to keep in mind because you do need a decent amount of light. If you want to know more about the lens, I put a link to a video that Greg from Lens Pro to Go put up. It goes into a ton more detail and gives you a place where you can grab it to try it out as well. To set my door up, I just laid it on top of the table so I could more easily get the moving shots that I want. Then I set up a bunch of black sheets and flags to black out the background in the direction that I would be looking. That way there wouldn't be any post for that. I could just add a grade and the background will dip into darkness perfectly. To light this, I went very, very simple. It was really just two lights, mostly just my Aperture 300D inside of the light dome. This was my main key. And then for a little bit of fill, I shot one of my ICANN lights into the ceiling just to give the door a little bit extra detail. Of course, I'm putting my light on the opposite side of the door so that the shadow side of the door is nearest to the camera, which gives us this nice contrast and that beautiful light sheen across the door. Then the only other light I used just a handful of times was this Aperture Amaran that I just threw on a C-stand so I could work it in where needed. Then to give some weight to the air, I added a bit of atmosphere with some haze kicking into the scene throughout the shoot, and that was it for the look. Obviously, the biggest factor here was the door itself. And again, this was built by my production designer, Jonathan Rudak, and you can find more about that in our full making of, which is also linked below. His work was so perfect that we were able to get this close on every detail and it still worked beautifully. The door actually looks even better close up because Rudak is a glorious man. Now to get the movements I wanted, I needed something motorized. It couldn't be something where a human person could have hands on it ever since any imperfection in any move will show heavily through this lens. So to get this right, I really needed robo precision. To do that, we used the Edelkrone Slider Plus and Head Plus. We got this set up not too long ago, but this is the first time that I've really used it, and man, do I love it. It's incredibly smooth and very simple to use. I'm controlling all of this through their app on my phone, which is very intuitive and well thought out, which let me move really fast with the gear so I could just focus on the shots, which is always a massive plus. One thing that I really loved about this system versus others that I've used is that I could just grab the camera and move it to the position that I want it to be, and then hit position one 
down on the app, then grab it again, move it to the next position, hit my end point of position two, then I can just hit play and it will do the move that I set over and over. So I didn't have to fiddle with the controls to maneuver it into the positions I wanted to set those. I could just grab it like a caveman and move it quickly and that was just all the great. But even with a very smooth system, in the end I did still have some movements that I wasn't fully happy with. So to really give it a more surreal and smooth vibe that I wanted, I shot it all in 60 frames or 120 frames per second, mostly in 120. That way I could speed up the move while we were shooting, slow it down in post, and that gave us the exact feel I was hoping for. After that, I brought all the footage into Premiere and created my selects. I ended up with a lot more shots than I needed, so some of the shots that I really loved just had to hit the cutting room floor, which is always a heartbreak. Next, I tossed on my grade, and for this, I just threw on an adjustment layer over all of my shots, and then added Film Convert's new Nitrate plugin, which I talked about Film Convert on the show before. You all know that I am a big fan, but Nitrate is their best yet. This is a really killer plugin that gives you a lot more flexibility to dial in the look you want. So up here, I'll set my camera and profile that I shot with, which automatically then converts you into a more balanced image in a full log conversion. Then I'll come down here into our color correction area and I'll adjust the contrast a little more, then push the whole thing to a very cold look. After that, I jump to my favorite new thing in here, which is grain response. Right here, I can really adjust the grain that's already there to my liking with size, softness, strength, and saturation. Then I can go even further here and adjust just where the grain is really showing up with the curve. So if I want it more or less in the shadows, mids, or highlights, I can now select and modify that independently of the others. And of course up here, I can select the different film stocks and adjust that color and curve as well. But the grain has really always been my favorite thing about Film Convert's plugins. It's by far my favorite way to add that filmic grain into the image, which was used for the actual film as well. Just like with all my other films before, once the grain is done, we toss on Film Convert at the very end to add that final icing to the cake of the image. For this, we just added a very subtle organic grain in there and we were done. It's always that final little secret sauce that I like to put on all my images. In the end, the final bit of housekeeping was adding a little bit of warp stabilizer to any of the shots that needed it. There were very few, but I did find that a very low percentage inside of warp stabilizer really helped it all feel very solid. After that, Thompson threw on the text and we were done. But that's it. Again, if you haven't seen the film, check it out below. If you dig it, consider sharing. But until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat. Thank you.